everybody. It's so nice to see you again. Uh, we have another great stream today, a lot of interesting stories. The next live stream, uh, Kay Walton, I'm glad you have just a few minutes that you can join in. Um, the next live stream will be on Thursday. What I'm going to do, as I tweeted a little bit earlier, is that instead of doing watch-alongs at 3 in the morning when shows drop on Disney+, Plus, I'll do a live stream later that day, and the last subject, because it will be uh, the last story, because it'll have uh, spoilers, is we'll, be, we'll, we'll talk about the episode for that day. So more people can join in. We can have a really good spoiler discussion. It can be interactive. You'll already have seen my breakdown. Hey, Peter. Hey, Xavier. Uh, and we'll see if that works. We'll try that. Hey, Tom, I'm glad you just became a member. So let me give some shout outs to people who just joined. Xavier, Peter, let's see here. Uh, welcome ba back, uh, Clerk Spell. That's a beautiful name. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly, and I really like seeing your picture there. Uh, let's see here. Bubbles, hey, Bubbles, welcome back. Uh, Tom, yes, I can see there that you joined. Juan, hey, Juan, welcome back. Uh, if you join during a live stream, I'll give you a shout out uh, when you join. But otherwise, uh, at the end of every stream, you can ask me anything you'd like for the final 10 minutes. Hey, Nero, uh, thanks for joining. And then uh, we'll do some shout outs at the very, very end. So we have really good stories today. Uh, let's see. So, hey, KG. Uh, hey, Rage. Rage, the promised end. It's very nice to see everybody. All right, so, so let's get started, all right? So uh, here we go. And we'll have, by the way, I think that next week on Thursday, I'll do an open, you know, we do an open to everybody stream. Uh, you have arrived, little brother Gabriel, that's funny. Uh, every uh, other week we do an open to all stream and I'll do it on Thursday so that people can join into the She-Hulk discussion if they would, if they would like to. Uh, you liked Superbia, Rage the Promised End? That makes me very happy. All right. Hey, Jesse, welcome back. Uh, all right, here we go. Boop. All right, story number one. Uh, this broke very late last night. Uh, hold on. It's bothering me that it's not. Uh, all right, it's fine. It's, it's not perfectly centered where I want it to be. All right, so anyway, late last night, Ezra Miller uh, put out an official apology uh, through... Uh, variety. So he finally has, you know, he has emerged, he's decided to speak, and he said, uh, they said, sorry, I want to make sure I use the correct pronouns. Uh, Ezra said, I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. I'm committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage in my life. Uh, it was also revealed that Ezra Miller is going to undergo, hey Noah, is going to undergo treatment uh, to try and get some help. Uh, I've heard that he's actually, that they've actually been undergoing treatment already, uh, but they've, they've decided to finally make a public statement. I think that an interview probably would have benefited them, although Ezra Miller might not be at a, a stage in their life where he can do a good interview or an effective interview, I guess you might say. All right, so this is very, this is a complicated situation with a lot of different parts, all right? And I do agree that, it's, as Lisa said, it does sound very corporate. Uh, people have said it sounds like it was written by Vought, you know, from the boys. Uh, you know, I don't think it sounds particularly sincere, but it is a step in the right direction because uh, we don't know what Ezra Miller's mental status is right now. Now, my position on this, of course, has evolved quite a bit. As you might recall, I started out very sympathetic to Ezra because I knew a lot of things behind the scenes about what, he, what they were going through. Uh, someone they knew had committed suicide, uh, which I think is very sympathetic and you feel very bad for that individual. And I think it has been spoken of at this point that they did lose somebody. Um, and they really had a mental break and I knew that they had quit Hollywood. They had said they were done acting and walked off set uh, and it had been a really crazy difficult situation. Um, and I was very sympathetic to that. However, because, you know, at that point, Ezra Miller was only hurting him, himself. Uh, and, you know, you know, we, of course, don't want that. But then more and more stories came out that Ezra Miller was uh, hurting other people. And I think that this is a very slippery... You're right themselves. Thank you, Danny. Uh, I think that there is 
a very slippery slope is when, when it comes to, to sympathy, when your actions, uh, even if they are a cry for help, start to endanger innocent people around you uh, that you know or strangers. Uh, hey, Jay Got Milk, welcome back. Uh, and so I felt very alarmed by not only Ezra Miller's behavior in Hawaii, uh, but also reports about him kind of seeming to start a cult. And as Sohn just pointed out, minors being involved and, uh, you know, illegal substances, I thought were, were really problematic for me. I thought that, you know, this became a situation where it was really a problem and it became, we quickly became less sympathetic. Now, law enforcement, whenever law enforcement gets involved, it's quite serious. Hey, Terry, law enforcement does not get lightly involved in these scenarios. Uh, and especially when there are charges. Uh, these aren't, you know, getting off with a warning or just, you know, police reports. These are actual charges where it looks like Ezra Miller will have to appear in court. So that's quite serious. And I think that to some degree, you know, you need law enforcement. I think it's very good advice in life, you know, for the most part. Obviously, there is police brutality and misconduct. But, uh, oh, Alex, that's so generous of you. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Thank you. And I, that sticker is so cute. But I think that for the most part, you know, society will fall apart if we don't at least make the positive assumption off the bat that the police will do their job, that law enforcement will do their job. I feel like we need to give the law enforcement a chance to do their job and to see what happens. So Deadline added a couple of extra information. They said that the reason this statement came out is that Ezra Miller's longtime CAA agent has been working very hard to smooth things over. Now, I hear that Ezra Miller will not be coming back for any more flash appearances. This is it. So I think there's some chance, and I don't really know how he could work anymore. I think it would be very difficult to insure him on a new film, especially because of, you know, him walking off the set of, you know, The Flash in February. Uh, uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, I feel like it would be, I would think anybody would be, would be reluctant to hire him because you just aren't sure what you're going to get or if you can eat them or if you're even sure you can complete the film. So I suspect that Ezra Miller and his agent really want The Flash to be released so that Ezra Miller can maybe get his profit of participation, which could be quite a bit of money if the film does well. And it is testing quite well. Now that leads to, and it's a $200 million movie, uh, very expensive. Now, uh, uh, Keith, they were able to finish the film because, you know, it was just like a couple of pickups and, the, the, you know, the film had mostly wrapped. There's a lot of rumors swirling about how they're redoing the movie and changing it. As of, like, today, I heard that they haven't changed anything substantially. Uh, it did test much better than Batgirl, uh, although I don't think that's fair to Batgirl because... Um, Batgirl, you know, was a fair score. I, you know, the rumor is is that Black Adam tested at the same level as Batgirl, and that's coming out. Uh, but um, the Flash tested in the '80s, and that's really impressive for a movie, any movie, you know. So that's very, very strong. So I can see, well, I can understand why Warner Brothers Discovery feels maybe there's something that can be salvaged here. And I've seen people bring up: Do regular people know about this? Do regular people know? about what Ezra, Ezra Miller's been going through, or is this just something that people on social media are concerned with? Well, I'll tell you this from my experience. If everyone on the face of the earth could find out that there was a very quick, almost blink and you miss it, LGBT kiss and light year, they will find out about Ezra Miller's behavior. It just has not reached them yet because the media in their area just doesn't feel that it will sell a story. However, when The Flash is about to come out, and it is a big movie. Uh, it's a big summer movie playing at your local multiplex. You better believe it. That every single trade and every single outlet, hey Fabian, will cover it. Every time Ezra Miller does an interview, uh, which I'm sure will be quite limited, they will be asked about it. So I think that it's not particularly maybe well known right now, but I think that it will become quite well known, uh, you know, right before the movie comes out. Now this brings up, I think, a really important point. Jesse the Good Witch, that was extremely kind of you to do that. That's so nice. That's very nice of you. I know sometimes you can be a member, sometimes you can't, uh, but that was a very support, I really appreciate the support and your comment about uh, Ezra Miller. Now here's the thing. 
I think that, and we're seeing this across so many different spectrums. We were just talking about Chris Pratt yesterday, and a number of you were very frustrated, and you said you felt there was a level of unfairness in terms of accountability, that some people were held more accountable than others for a behavior that was sometimes equal or, in some cases, not even as bad. Uh, and I thought that that was a very interesting and good point. So I feel that you, you can't have people like Will Smith and Chris Pratt uh, and Jared Leto for the things that he does. You can't have these people get canceled to a degree. And then Ezra Miller, who has done things that have actually, of all these people, Ezra Miller is the only one who has actually had law enforcement involved and have there be no ramifications. I think that that's really bad and it just does not give anybody a leg to stand on. And I think that that is how the Ezra Miller situation will be successful. Uh, hey, hey, why, why uh, Tyler, thanks for joining. I think that any, even politicians, when they point out how things are not fair, okay, will point to the Ezra Miller situation. Ezra Miller will become a talking point when this film is closer to release. So it's a false sense of security to believe that people you know, aren't talking. Then that's the other thing. Uh, as Ashley just pointed out, even within Warner Brothers, there isn't a consistency as to beha in behavior. Hey, Darren, there isn't a consistency. Good people seem to get punished. Bad people se seem to get rewarded, right? Why has Jeff Johns never been reprimanded or even a statement made about that individual? Why is Johnny Depp fired and Amber Heard is not? Uh, or in, in any way. I mean, I think it's a com that's a complex situation. I'm not saying Amber Heard should be fired. I'm saying Johnny Depp shouldn't have been fired, quite frankly. That's what I'm saying. And I just feel like the more that this happens, uh, the worse it's going to get. And the, I think the more people aren't going to want to hear about ramifications because they're going to say, oh, that's a good point, Lloyd. J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling, I think, you know, has done things that I think are not fantastic and has caused a lot of problems. And yet, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery now has never made a point to it. And so I think that even if you feel you're on the right side, uh, you, you can't say, uh, Alec Baldwin's another good example. Uh, you have to be consistent or how do you expect any, you know, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Uh, Josh, Robert Downey Jr. I think is a little bit of a different situation. Uh, Robert, and also Robert Downey Jr. had his problems when there wasn't the internet. So very, hardly anybody knew about it. And I don't believe Robert Downey Jr. hurt anybody. Uh, I think that his was more hurting himself and you know, doing some unfortunate things. And he really did. Also, I want to point out, hey, Deidre, Robert Downey, welcome back. Robert Downey Jr. went to jail. Robert Downey Jr. was in jail for a year. And so Robert Downey Jr., I think if Ezra Miller were to go to a facility uh, that was, you know, you're not allowed to leave, you know, I'm not saying it has to be prison, but he, you know, if he went and you know, did, did a lot of time in doing helping treatment, I think that would go a lot to rehabilitating Ezra Miller's image. So I think that's like really important. People always bring up all the time, Robert, what about Robert Downey Jr.? What about Robert Downey Jr.? Robert Downey Jr. went to jail. Robert Downey Jr. was convicted in court. You know, he has a record. And I think that's one of the reasons Robert Downey Jr. you'll see reaches out to a number of these people, people that you think would be who are qu considered quite toxic, and Robert Downey Jr. tries very hard to help them because, you know, he's been there. I think, I don't know, if, I think he reached, I saw a rumor that he reached out to Army Hammer, and I'm like, I think I might be a step too far, Robert Downey Jr. But I have to respect that Robert Downey Jr. feels a calling to do that because of what happened to him. Uh, I, have to, I have to respect that to some degree. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, Robert Downey Jr. probably feels a lot of people felt that he was beyond help. Uh, but I don't see Robert Downey Jr. reaching out to, uh, and also Robert Downey Jr. is, that's right, that's right, Stone. Robert Downey Jr. is, uh, you know, helping people get help. Robert Downey Jr. isn't excusing anyone's behavior or letting them off the hook or saying nobody should hold them accountable. Robert Downey Jr. is like, you are accountable. Let me help pay for your medical bills and to make sure you get treatment. Hey, slimy dog. But he hasn't reached out to Ezra. So I think that's interesting in and of itself. Uh, to me, the minor, minors being involved, that needs to really be clarified. It needs to be, and it needs to be clarified by law enforcement. And I think to some degree, 
All the people who bring up these things about, you know, and the, the press is very guilty about this. Hey, Daniel, the press will bring up an accusation and yet never finish the story, particularly if the person's cleared. You're like, oh, yeah, what happened with that? Were they guilty of doing that? And the press is like, ah, oh, that's not a hot story anymore, so whatever. And you're like, ah, oh, but you kind of have to correct it because you put it out there. Uh, uh, you know, you know it's, I do believe very much so in innocent until proven guilty until the, in, in, instead of the other way around. But I personally don't see Ezra, uh, thank you, my love for the, uh, for movies. Uh, uh, that's a, oh, thank you. That's adorable. That's a pair. I love pairs. I personally feel, I think that it's going to be very hard for Ezra Miller to come back. Uh, I chili robot says at the end of the day, what matters most to Warner Brothers and all businesses is their bottom line. If you're bothered by their inaction, then vote with your money. That's an excellent point. Hey, Gavin, that's an excellent, excellent, excellent point. People are going to have to speak with their wallets, and people are going to have to speak with their clicks. And you're seeing that happen with Ms. Marvel's low ratings. I think audience, and you know, and let's see how Black Adam does. I think people are going to really speak up at the box office with the new DC movies. And I think they're going to let Warner Brothers Discovery know whether or not they can get away with this. And so we'll see what happens. And also Fantastic Beasts, you're right. People really spoke uh, with Fantastic Beasts. And people, you know, for better, I think for worse, but people, people were pretty clear about how they felt about Lightyear. Uh, I think people were commenting there on a number of issues, lack of Tim Allen, not being very much like the original t Toy Story. But, you know, that's what's going to really make the difference. Uh, you know, you can complain. And I, think, I do think social media campaigns are effective. But at the end of the day, nothing's going to be more effective than voting with your wallet. Marjorie says, people love Johnny Depp and he was still let go. I'm not so sure that the studios really listen. Marjorie, what happened there is that they freaked out that Johnny Depp was convicted of uh, spousal abuse. Hey, Jalen. Or found guilty of it in uh, the UK. Uh, and I think they shouldn't have done that. I think that uh, Johnny Depp, you know, I don't know how great a job he was doing with you, to be honest. In the, I mean, I thought he had really good moments and then not so great moments. But, you know, J.K. Rowling is really responsible for making that a mess. And I don't feel, again, I don't feel Johnny Depp is like 100% clear. I think he's culpable as well as to what happened there. But I don't think that, you know, he is, should be a, the devil and Amber Heard should be an angel. Um, so it's coming, these comebacks are very tricky. And I think... I think it's really, really hard, especially with social media, and now people have receipts forever, you know? And I think people have to be really careful. And I think, I really think that uh, people have to be really careful with their behavior, and they have to understand that, you know, I'll, I'll see a lot of celebrities say, I'm just a human, man, I'm just like you. And it's like, well, no, that's not true. You know, you have a responsibility and you have people who are relying on you for their employment and, their, and, and for making money and businesses rely on you. And so if you want to take on that responsibility, uh, you, have to be, you have to do that. You have to understand that that's what you're doing. Uh, and the, and you, you do have a responsibility. Well, as you know, it's what Uncle Ben says, with great power comes great responsibility. And he's not just talking about physical power. So before we move to the next story, do you guys really, do, does anyone here think Ezra Miller can make a comeback? Jay Got Milk, uh, thanks Justin, hey Justin Drexel. Jay Got Milk says maybe five to 10 years from now, Ezra can make a comeback if they, uh, yeah, I think it would have to take that long. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Brad. I really feel it would take that long. Maybe five, five years or so. If he like total, if, if Ezra Miller, if they totally changed and became a totally different person and you can see that they had really gone through it, then maybe people would be like, all right, let's talk about it. But I feel the, the irresponsibility towards others. I mean, I think, again, when it's, uh, again, everybody felt bad for Will Smith when he was dealing with his own personal problems. But as soon as he physically hurt Chris Rock and, you know, everybody else's Oscar experience and, you know, uh, and, and overshadowed the wins for so many other people, he lost sympathy. And that's a really important thing, I think, for everybody to remember. You can get as upset as you want but you have to remember that as soon as you start involving other people in it and endangering them, you know, sympathy for you is going to really go down the drain fast. So you should really, you know, try and keep that in mind with your actions and your behavior. Uh, 
Uh, Stephen, I agree. The Flash box office will be very important. Julio would see The Flash. I mean, it's tough. We're all super comic book fans. So, I mean, I would review it, of course. Although yesterday I was like, I don't know if I'm going to cover the Golden Globes. Yeah, it's like 50-50, it looks like. Oh, I see some of you will pirate it. Kledgy is like, I'll pirate that movie. That's true. I feel very bad for Sasha Kaye and Michael Keaton and, you know, Ben Affleck's in this movie. I think a lot of people, especially with the short, well, Warner Brothers Discovery is actually extending their theatrical windows again. But I think that people might pirate it or wait uh, to stream it or to buy it on digital. And, and, you know, or maybe at least not its opening weekend. I think people could at very, the very least not see it its opening weekend. Would you maybe not go the opening weekend? That's right, Danny. This movie is like a year away. And it's like wall-to-wall -wall Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller is like in every scene playing multiple characters. Here's the thing. I thought that nobody would be able to resist going to see Lightyear because it's a Toy Story movie. And it, star it had the voice of Chris Evans, Captain America himself. And boy, did people not go and see that in theaters. So that, I think, was a real wake-up call that people are willing more than ever before to not see something. I am curious to see how Lightyear did on uh, streaming, you know, on Disney+. Plus, and we'll get that answer in a few weeks. But very interesting. That's right, Glalie Master. Chris Evans outside of the MCU does not do particularly well at the box office. All right, so that's the first story of the day. Fascinating. Thanks to so many people who are joined in today's stream. All right, so the second story of the day. Hold on. Boop. Oh, no, I covered a Burton Birdie. Hold on. Let me move this. There we go. Okay. I was able to move this one. They're like, we got ourselves a big movie and you covered our faces up. All right, so Burton and Birdie, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. They're making a movie. They're making a movie. They've talked about making a movie before, but now they're really making a movie because they just hired Burton and Birdie, the Hawkeye directors, to direct the movie. Now, I'll just say it now. I'm getting a little tired of Disney overall not hiring cinematic directors to direct their films. I'm like, how are these shots going to look? I mean, like the Marvel Disney Plus shows, with the exception, I feel, of Loki, where Kate Heron knocked it out of the park, are very TV, you know, the very uninspired in their visuals. And so I get nervous that they're going to start doing that more with their movies, because uh, I thought that, that was very much the case with Multiverse of Madness. How on, uh, hey, Roland. How on earth does Multiverse of Madness with Sam Raimi directing, how is that not wall-to-wall -wall atmosphere? So Moon Knight, I thought Moon Knight had some cool moments, but still very TV-like. You know, I, I really want someone who's going to like, uh, like look, think about the Batman in comparison, you know, what Matt Reeves did there to, to you know, to this Marvel stuff. I mean, I really want to have things where you're like, ah, stick it on a wall, it's a work of art. But I will say that Bert and Bertie did direct two episodes of Our Flag Means Death, and that show was very, very popular. If you're a fan of that show, uh, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I can see how popular it's become. Uh, they, uh, they directed episodes eight and nine, the second to last two, in case you're curious as to what, which ones they did. But I got to tell you, I feel very, I don't really feel great about Bert and Bertie making this like a cinematic movie. I'm like, I can already tell what it's going to look like. And I think that well, I appreciate the Disney factory, uh, the Disney machine, because it churns out so much content. In the past, it has not seemed like widgets, but it's starting to seem more and more like widgets. Uh, that's an interesting question, Lloyd. Uh, is it going to be on Disney Plus? I've seen, I've heard, I mean, they're saying it's going to be in theaters, but it would make a lot of sense to me if it was on Disney Plus, quite frankly. Now, what I also find interesting about this is that uh, Margot Robbie is a producer on this film. Isn't that interesting? Um, Jesse the Goodwitch says, does this mean Disney will eventually give the monorail its own movie? That's pretty funny. I like the monorail. Although, some monorail, people have died on the monorail, which is quite tragic. I was actually in Disney World when that happened. They had a horrific monorail accident. That's why you can't ride in the front of the monorail anymore, because somebody got killed. Uh, actually, one of the, uh, Big Thunder Mountain at one point actually at some time had derailed and killed a, pass, uh, killed a guest. Uh, but anyway... 
Uh, so yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be really careful. You gotta be tricky. Uh, you gotta, you gotta watch out for yourself. But Margot Robbie, of course, has talked to Disney about doing a, another Pirates movie, right? So I think it's interesting that she's producing this, especially because Scarlett Johansson is producing for Disney a Tower of Terror movie. And they have the upcoming Haunted Mansion movie as well, which is why I included those, uh, st those pictures there. I gotta tell you though, if Bert and Bertie are directing and Margot Robbie is producing, I will say with almost 100% certainty that this is a female lead. And that makes me a little nervous. I feel Disney might be going a little overboard. Uh, and I think that, you know, I feel some of the things, you know, some people go, oh man, there sure is a lot of representation in Hollywood. And I've been thinking about it. And I think what happens is that everybody, while everything's coming out of Hollywood, every single project is done by individual groups of people. And every single project, the people on that project go, well, we want to try and do some representation. And we have a cool idea for what we'd like to do. And everybody feels that their representation is going to be better than the other people's representation. And you go, okay, maybe. But then it just becomes all representation. And I think it dilutes everybody else's. So you have to be really, really careful. Uh, like, for instance, there are, you know, they already changed up National Treasure to have a female younger lead instead of um, uh, Nicolas Cage. Although, Danny, if Sadie Sink from Stranger Things was the lead on uh, Thunder Mountain Railroad, I'd be all in, you know? I think it's also about finding the right actress. Are you finding an actress that people are excited about, like Millie Bobby Brown as well? Or are you finding an actor that checks a box? So you gotta be really careful. Um, I'm really, Danny, I'm so scared for Phoebe Waller-Bridge and in Indiana Jones. I am really, really scared. Uh, I'm very curious to see who the cast members will be in this. Casting will be key. Like for instance, the casting on Haunted Mansion is what makes me excited about that. You've got Lakeith Stanfield, you've got Owen Wilson. By the way, most of the leads in the, uh, in the Haunted Mansion movie are of color. And I was pretty shocked that when I was looking at the trades coverage of this story, they listed Haunted Mansion is coming out and the only actor they mentioned was Owen Wilson. Hey, Justin Kay. And I'm like, what about Tiffany Haddish and Lakeith Stanfield? Uh, like they're the leads. Like, are you kidding me with that? So I, I was pretty shocked about that. That's right, Stephen. I do think Disney picks directors that they can control. But I think you want to pick a director that you can work with, quite frankly. But anyway, I'm very excited about the Haunted Mansion movie. It takes place in New Orleans. I think it sounds really exciting. So I have high hopes for that. Uh, uh, Tower of Terror is really pretty far away from coming together. Um, but, you know, let's see what they, let's see who they cast. Uh, that's right, Jared Leto is also in Haunted Mansion in a small role, and so is Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, but I, let, let's see how, um, how this comes together. I enjoyed Jungle Cruise with Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt, but I don't think it was a keeper. Uh, and I don't think it totally represented the ride, to be honest with you. Once again, it seemed more like, it seemed more like a Dwayne Johnson Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like, that's, it didn't make me feel like I was on the ride. Like, when they added Jack Sparrow to the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction, I was like, oh, that's perfect. But I'm like, you don't have to put anything from the Jungle Cruise movie on the Jungle Cruise ride. Pirates of the Caribbean, of course, is only successful because of Johnny Depp. I mean, I think, of course, other people did contribute, but... Johnny Depp was the special magic sauce on that. And so, oh, by the way, if you're doing the uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party, I was delighted to see that for that, for that event, if you go on Pirates of the Caribbean, they have actors playing like haunted pirates in the queue. You know, they have those little places, like those little roped off areas, like they're supposed to be these like catacombs when you try and go on the ride. And they have real actors in there. And I was like, that's a great idea. So the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are fantastic, and they remain the, the one to beat. And I have not seen any other movie uh, be as good. But I mean, I'm, I love these attractions, so I'd love to see them work out. I think it would be great. But I, I, let's see how Haunted Mansion comes together. I hope it feels like the ride. I think the trick is, it, hey, Wilby, I think the trick is it has to feel like the ride. And so far, they haven't been able to do that outside of Pirates. All right, third story of the day. Boom, baby. This is very interesting to me. I like this story quite a bit, and I'm excited to discuss it with you. All right, so uh, Walmart Plus. I didn't even know there was a Walmart Plus. Walmart Plus, there was a rumor apparently going around for the past few days 
Uh, have fun, Paula. You're going to have a great time at Not So Scary. It's going to be great. That's a great party. You can enter the Magic Kingdom starting at 4 p.m., so make sure you get in there early. All right, hey, Andrew. So Walmart Plus, uh, there was a rumor that they wanted to partner with another streaming service uh, and that they were going to announce it. They are, everybody was like, oh, Walmart Plus is looking for somebody to, ha to be in their, 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 in their uh, part of their package. And the reason that they wanted to do this, which I thought was uh, actually quite smart, is that they're trying to compete with Amazon Prime. And Amazon Prime is not only free two-day shipping, but you get a bunch of video content included in your price. You know, it's the only subscription service which includes free two-day shipping. And I always think that's very funny. So Walmart's like, how are we going to have anybody sign up for us if we don't have any video? So they ended up getting Paramount Plus. And they not only got Paramount Plus, but they got Paramount Plus with ads. And I'm like, what? That seems ridiculous to me. Now, this will start in September. They're going to really, if you, if you sign up for Walmart Plus, which I believe is like $13 a month or something, you can get Paramount Plus, the ad version, at no extra cost. Now, what shows does Paramount Plus have that's going to get you excited about this offer? You know, like Amazon did a real, has done a, Amazon from the beginning had some really big shows. They had Fleabag, they had Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, they were really an awards darling. Maybe Apple was, is walking the same path. And then eventually, of course, uh, they got involved with superheroes, Amazon. It's been incredibly successful. Now, they have the new iCarly show, you're right. All the Star Trek shows, the Yellowstone universe. You can watch The Offer if you haven't seen The Offer. Also, the Sonic spinoffs, as Josh just pointed out, and the, all of CBS and all that stuff. And Avatar Studios someday, as uh, Kledgy pointed out. But I feel like, oh, and Halo, if people like Halo. I, I think most people don't like Halo, but still. But anyway, I don't know. I feel like that's not enough of a boost. I don't think it's enough of a boost for either one, quite frankly. And I think, um, I guess nobody else wanted to partner with Walmart, but I feel like I don't really think that's going to do for them uh, what Amazon Prime's video does for that, for that membership. Is anyone here a, a member of Walmart Plus? Juan says, Walmart Plus offers two-day shipping, free delivery, and 10 cents off a gallon of gas. So that's pretty good. Juan, it seems like you enjoy being a member of Walmart Plus. That's great. Do you feel good about the Paramount Plus edition, or you're like, it doesn't matter? I agree, Leah. Not being ad-free is ridiculous. You got banned, Sean? I do actually subscribe to Paramount Plus. I subscribed and they had their presentation and I was like, this looks great. And then like none of it really materialized. And then I forgot to not hit auto renew. So I got it for another year. <laughs> and I pay for it for my whole family. They have some good old shows on there. And I did love the offer. The offer was incredible. I'm so glad I had that. And they have some pretty good movies on there. Hey, Maple. Maple Vertigo. That's a cute name. All right. So those are the three stories of the day. Uh, it is 521. You can ask me anything you'd like until 531. And then I must return to work. Oh, ghosts. I like the original UK ghosts, Root Honey Badger, but I hear good things about the American version. Fortis, I haven't heard anything about Tron 3. Although, the way Jared Leto's career is going, I'd be shocked if he was still attached. Chris, no Walt Disney World trips planned just yet. I'm hoping maybe to go next year. Uh, Eichley Ro Brobot says, Grace, what's the one film that you want to hear some news about the most? I want to get Little Mermaid started. I'm really hopeful that we're going to have a sneak peek at D23. I'm ready for that discussion to start. And I just want to see how it looks. I'm very excited. Hey, my rich life. That's a funny name. Ilion, Aladdin 2, they're working on the script, but it hasn't been, it hasn't been greenlit. Uh, I mean, it, has, it doesn't have a release date or anything like that, so it's clearly going to take a long time. Um, uh, Mina Masood is supposed to have a pretty cool thing that he got, so hopefully we'll hear about that soon. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up being on Ahsoka. Uh, my love for movie says, you mentioned Will Smith. Where do you think his career is at right now? Um, I feel like none of his, I think that, you know, he just made, I think that he made mistake after mistake after mistake and it just compounded a very bad situation. 
I think that his apologies have never really kind of connected and the more and he's done three apologies now and I think the last one very much felt like he wasn't getting any work and so he felt okay let me try apologizing again uh I think that it's gonna I don't know if Will Smith will ever be able to recover a hundred percent from that to be honest with you Bjorn says, um, let's see here. Good luck with your documentary. I'm not quite sure where it's premiering. You can DM me about that on Twitter. Brett says, who do you think wins July 21st weekend, Oppenheimer or Barbie? Oh, hands down, Barbie. I mean, let's see the trailer. It could look awful suddenly, but I think, I think if you're not, if you don't, if you're going to see Barbie, you got to see Barbie opening weekend. That's my feeling. And I think it's just going to be a real party. Hey, Barbie, let's go party. Oh, Palm Tree, I'm so happy that you and your brother feel that way. Please say hi to your brother for me. That's very nice of you. Brett Crandall says, thoughts on the Wizard of Oz film with the blackish creator. Uh, Kenya Barris is doing a Wizard of Oz remake. The way I feel about that is the way the whole internet feels about that, which everyone just said, isn't that the whiz? And then also, I feel like... Um, I really didn't care for Cheaper by the Dozen, which Kenya Barris spearheaded that latest version on Disney+. Plus, and so I really lost a lot of confidence in him uh, to do anything, particularly something that's supposed to be a movie. Uh, I'm, I'll talk about the uh, Wednesday when the trailer drops tomorrow. I, as I tweeted last night, the trailer's coming out tomorrow. They had a first look in Vanity Fair today, but we'll be talking all about it tomorrow, so we'll do that then. Jalen says, any Scream 6 news? Also, what are your thoughts on the new rumors that Spyglass stopped Paramount from paying her more? Uh, I can't, sp I haven't heard those rumors, so I can't speak to that. I'm very excited for Scream 6. I think that there's a really strong Scream fandom, and I think that Kirby being back is going to be really a big deal. So I'm excited for it. I think it'll be fun. KP Production says, what were your thoughts? Did you catch the Westworld season four finale this Sunday? Do you think they stuck the landing? I do not think they stuck the landing. I thought it was awful. Uh, and I was like, hey, Kuma Kick. And I thought, man, this show, like it was really good for a while, but then it went right back to all the problems it had before. So I actually think they really missed the landing and fell flat on their face. And I don't think they should renew that show. Lloyd Lester says, Grace, what are your thoughts on a Wicked prequel series? Oh, the John Wick. I thought I was like, Wicked? Uh, coming to Peacock in 2023. I think that if they're not careful, they're going to really just do too much John Wick. They're doing a ballerina spinoff. I think it's too much. Matt Damrich, I mean, maybe Beyonce would be involved with Black Panther. You know, I mean, Beyonce's doing her own thing. I think Beyonce can do whatever she wants. I'm, I'm sure she still supports it. But I think, you know, let's see. You know, and also the Black Panther doesn't want to repeat itself either. They might want to partner with a different artist. That's right, Juan. The Maeve ending, I was very unhappy with the way Maeve was treated. Alex, I did interview Henry Cavill on the carpet for Man of Steel. Uh, let's see here. Present Progressive says, after your She-Hulk business video, I'm quite scared that Phase 5 will be quite silly and it will take until Phase Fix that Kevin Feige can fix that. I hear Secret Invasion's more serious. Hey, so effing awesome. That's funny. So that's good. Let's see here. Uh, Jose, I will talk about She-Hulk CGI in my review tomorrow uh, when that review embargo lifts at 9 a.m. I just filmed my review and I have to edit it after today's live stream, actually. David says, with Disney Plus creating an ad tier for more profitabil profitability, could this permit less MCU content or will it create corporate demand for more? Uh, I think they want, I think they should dial it back, to be honest with you, but I feel like they just really want to, they want to combat churn. So the only way they could dial back the MCU shows is if somebody else steps up. So some other group would have to produce more shows. So F and Awesome says, I've never caught you live, Grace. Just, just joined so I could say hi. And the capital letters in my username spell my name. Sean. Oh, hey, Sean. Yep, yeah, hey, Sean. I'm so glad you said hi. It's so nice to talk to you. Carlos, I haven't heard anything about Gal Gadot and Wonder Woman 3. I mean, Patty Jenkins is getting dragged today on Twitter. There's no reason, really, at all. Um, but I feel like they're not, I would be very surprised if they made that. Let's 
see. Michael says, are you looking forward to Damien Chazelle's new film? Uh, I really didn't like La La Land, as you know, but I loved Whiplash, so I got to see a trailer. Also, Brad Pitt looks pretty dashing in it, so let's see how it looks. Uh, let's see here. Who asked me that? Somebody just asked me something. Whitney. Hey, Whitney. Hi, Grace. What comics have you been reading and what do you recommend? Well, if you follow me on uh, Twitter as a super follower, I print, I actually share my stack every week. But since you asked me here, I read a lot of Betty and Veronica vintage comics because I don't have to report on them. They're, they kind of allow, they're like the real housewives of comic books to me. So I, don't, I can just turn my brain off. But as for comics, I'm reading a lot of DC recently. Uh, so I, that's, that's excellent. You know, uh, I read, uh, I'm looking forward to the new One Bad Day one shots. I did enjoy Tom King's, uh, you know, uh, Catwoman and Riddler comic that came out recently. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, so I, I, I mean, I've been reading things on or off. I think comics are not in a really great place right now. I also like Tom Taylor's Nightwing quite a bit. Uh, those are the comics I'm enjoying the most right now. And I, as for Marvel, some of their X-Men titles are okay, but I think, you know, I, I don't love them. Palm Tree says, have you heard anything regarding Joker 2 plot rumors, through how it mainly will take place in Arkham Asylum and how it's supposed to be very dark? I have heard those rumors. I can't confirm them. I think the rumors are ridiculous, uh, and I hope that's not the case. I think if they, they were pretty dark last time, but if they cross the line, it's going to be tough. Uh, Sean says, Grace, do you think Eternals Moon Knight will appear in Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars? Uh, I'd be surprised if they did. I'm going to make a video on that. Maybe this week, maybe next week. Phil says, any thoughts on Sandman's numbers and leaked episode 11? I haven't seen the new Sandman numbers. I hope it's doing well. And I haven't seen anything about a leaked episode 11. So I got to go check that out. Your picture is adorable, Phil. Um, Jacob says, what directors could write the ship at Marvel? Um, I think that I would hope that Marvel would maybe start to maybe lighten, you know, let, loosen the leash on their directors, perhaps. Uh, and also, somebody, I think it was Cedric, uh, wrote a really good comment in one of my videos. I think it was the recent She-Hulk business video. And, and Cedric said, uh, BTT viewer, said that as soon as Kevin Feige admit, I mean, uh, as soon as Sam Raimi admitted that he didn't watch WandaVision, even though he was making the follow-up to that show... Cedric said that became the, like the really clear evidence that the, that the MCU had become too big and unwieldy and that they just were not, they were getting too sloppy. And I think that was a really good observation. And so I feel like that's the MCU's real problem and that they are just not paying as attention to detail as they did before. Callie I feel bl bad. I haven't heard anything about Blade recently. I, I, I'm sorry. Danny, I haven't heard anything about Furiosa recently. TJ Williams, checks and balances for the MCU is a good way to put it. Ashley Grady says, any word about Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and what the focus will be? Yes, it's going to be Rocket Raccoon's origin story, kind of, uh, with the high evolutionary um, and like where Rocket comes from. And so that's going to be a big part of it. And then also kind of resolving or at least, you know, get, having some movement in the Gamora, Peter Quill situation. And of course, Adam Warlock. Hey, Cormac. Hey, Noah. Mika, I think there's a very good chance they'll have an Obi-Wan season two. The show did pretty well. Ewan McGregor wants to do it, and how can you not do it now that Liam Neeson returned? So I would hope that they would do it, but I really hope they would hire a better writer. I think Andor could be big. I think Andor could maybe be a game changer if it's successful. Oh, I hope it's successful. I'm scared. Green Lantern's light, Wonder Twins is canceled. I also hear Green Lantern's not going to go forward, even though some people are saying that it is. I wouldn't trust anything that comes out. I don't think anything's safe unless they're actually, even if they're filming it, as you saw with Batgirl. Um, but, I mean, I think we need, I think Warner Brothers' discovery for the next few months is just 
still repositioning. Thank you, N1. That's very kind of you to let me know time was up. I do have to get back to my videos that I'm editing. All right, let me do a couple of shout outs. What are you up to? You know, what are you doing today? Are you eating anything? What are you up? Have you had anything happen interesting in your day? Just give me a way for me to interact with you and be like, hey, and be able to say your name and talk to you. Oh, Gavin, that's so kind of you to say. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Kay says, enjoying tea in Ireland. Oh, I love it. Uh, uh, Chronicle, finishing up work at California. Those emojis are so cute. Emily, oh, Emily, it's always so nice to see you. Eating ice cream in Utah. Good evening, Darren. I like how, uh, good evening, Darren. Let's see here. Alex Alfaro is watching The Hobbit. Danny says, going to rewatch your Thunder Force video because it makes me laugh. Oh, I'm glad you liked that one. That's fun. I like, that makes me feel very happy. Oh, Callaghan is looking for a puppy. Super excited. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Congrats. And Carlos Munoz is getting McDonald's. Very jealous. Harlequin Dove said, I just finished a rum raisin plum smoothie. What a unique flavor. I've never heard of that before. I've had rum raisin cookies, which were excellent. Kuma Kicks is editing my buddy's YouTube video at home in Las Vegas. Awesome. Uh, we're having very similar afternoons. Let's see here. Ilion says, Rewatching Spy, one of my favorite Melissa McCarthy movies. Oh, you know it. I just love that movie. I feel so bad what happened to Melissa McCarthy's career. That was the high point. She was so funny in that movie. Let's see here. Josh said, Just finished eating breakfast in Hawaii. Oh, wow, you're in Hawaii. That's so awesome. Let's see here. Uh, uh, thrill, thrills, thrills Wilbury. What a great name. Says watching the Beatles get back. Uh, Babar also likes Spy. Uh, Usi says working on school from Amsterdam. Been a fan for months. Ah, welcome. I'm glad. Welcome, welcome to the BTT community. Ah, uh, Kledgy, that's very kind of you to say. Rashad says enjoying this live stream before work in sunny Las Vegas. That's right. I can't wait to turn the air conditioning back on. It is hot. I feel often like I have a James Bond villain pointing a, uh, the heat ray at my window. Let's see here. Uh, Henry X says, I'm going to watch your reaction to Blinding Light, Miss Marvel trailer. Perfect reaction. Ah, uh, yeah, I danced during that one. I love that song. He just got a, a haunted horror maze the weekend at, um, at uh, Hollywood St Universal uh, Studios in Orlando. Uh, let's see here. I'm not a big A24 fan, Arturo, but I am impressed that they have their own fandom. Carter James is having my last dinner with my sister before I drop her off at college tomorrow. Oh, Carter, that's so nice. You're such a good brother. Vincent says it's almost 100 degrees where I am. Ah, that's hot. Uh, Newbot Gaming just says gummy bears. I like gummy bears. I haven't had gummy bears in a while. I was going to buy some the other day, but I was concerned they would melt. Let's see here. Jalen says, just got back to New York City from a vacation in Montreal. Oh, I hope you had a good time. Joker45 says, just driving home from work and as always, tuning in. Ah, thank you. I hope you had a great day. Uh, oh, Jason Wood says, just happy to be here. Aw. Keith, hanging out with my new roommates, Paul and Chloe. Keith, you moved out? Oh, wow, that's very exciting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, thanks, Ravendra. You like watching my reaction to the Loki trailer? That was good stuff. And that show delivered. Juan says, eating coconut cookies, waiting for my coffee to be ready. Ooh, delicious. Jesse the Good Witch fittingly says, 76 days until Halloween. Right after D23 is over, I'm putting out all my Halloween decorations. I got Halloween sheets. I got Halloween napkins. I got Halloween stuff for my house. I got Halloween towels. It's all happening after D23. And then I'm going to have all September and October. Roland says, enjoying the sleigh stream at work. Oh, that's funny. I love it. Oh, yeah, sleigh. Millie Jo says, drinking Diet Mountain Dew in, on break in Portland, Oregon. Oh, I'm glad to keep you company. David Potts, Verninator. I don't know who that is, the Verninator edits, but I have seen some edits of me online, and I, I do think they're very funny. I do have a sense of humor, and I thought that was quite hilarious. Halloween's a pretty good holiday. I do like it. Christmas is my favorite, but I'm starting to really like Halloween. I feel there isn't enough entertainment for Halloween. Although I feel like I've seen every single Christmas movie too, though. I'm like, you got to make more Christmas. You got to make more holiday content. Thank goodness for Hocus Pocus this year. Hoc uh, Hocus Pocus 2. 
Kevin Hanna said, catching the end of the stream after a long day of two jobs. Good for you, Kevin. You know, you're doing the work. You're really, you know, I'm, it's really great. I'm glad that we can be here for you and it's time to relax. Charlie says, thinking of being a Wanda variant for Halloween. That's a great costume idea, Charlie. I hope you send me a picture of it. Green Lantern's Light said, double dipping to make this wonderful live stream while listening to my coworkers argue about work that they both did not do. <laughs> that does sound entertaining. I'm impressed I can compete with that argument. Hocus Pocus 2 comes out September 30th. It's going to be great. Uh, Tenerife says, I'm watching at 4 a.m. in Indonesia. Thank you for staying up while eating brownies and yogurt. I won't judge you. That's an interesting combo. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Hey, it's 4 in the morning. It sounds like a party. And Vincent says, I'm watching some shows on Netflix. All right, everybody. I had a wonderful time talking to you today. Lots of content tomorrow. Uh, the She-Hulk review, proper review proper, will go up at 9 a.m. Uh, I'm going to drop another She-Hulk video late in the day. I'll be reacting to the Wednesday trailer. And then on Thursday, I'll be breaking down the She-Hulk uh, first episode. And then we'll be having the live stream. That'll be the next live stream later in the day. And the end section of that will be a discussion of the show. So try to watch it before around 4 o'clock on Thursday if you want to be able to join into that conversation. Or you could always catch that live uh, later. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you later. See you later. Bye.